Hi, River. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> um, so we get to record two in a row, which has been really fun this weekend. Yeah, I like I like kind of doing that because then we get to take a little bit of a break next weekend. Yeah. Um, and today's guest is a repeat guest. <laughs> my, yeah, my legitimate chosen family, like for real. And um, one of my best friends, too, because not only do I just love her, I like her so much, too. And it's Chrissy. So Hi, Christine, guys. Christine, Christine friends coming all the way from Scottsdale. <laughs> yeah, and it's gorgeous here. Absolutely stunning. I know. Oh. Not everyone can say that, so we won't rub it in too much. Sorry, River. I can't wait for the sunshine. I know. <laughs> I can't wait for it. <laughs> Um, so Chrissy, why don't you just tell, tell the pod a little bit about, um, a little bit about your history and what, where you're at and what you do and all sorts of fun stuff about you. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm about to be 55 this year. Um, whoop, whoop. You know, double nickels seems absolutely impossible. Um, <laughs> cause I don't feel 55. I don't even know what that means, but you know, yeah. you know, once you get past 50, you're like, Oh, you know. I didn't think I'd still feel 20, but I do. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel better than ever, actually. Um, Physically and mind, body, spirit connection, stronger than ever, which is a blessing. Um, So, I mean, I guess I can start. I was, do you want me to start my childhood? Where would you like me to start? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, where, wherever, I think uh, the journey of where you were, came from and how you got to LA. Um, little bit of that part. I think there's always some value in where you came from to sort of show you where you are. I think it's yeah. Yeah. I would agree. So I was so I was born in the Midwest. I was born in Omaha. I mean, right in the smack dab center of the country. Um, you know, my parents were middle class Mm -hmm. and I have a brother, my older brother Jim, and um just, you know, a really good kid. I was always a good kid. Um, maybe a little bit of a people pleaser, which, you know, still, I still struggle with, but, um, I got married really, really young. I got married at 19 and it was not a good marriage. Um, it was abusive. It was volatile. Um, I was only married for like six months before I said, I am out of here. Like, this is not how I see my life going. Um, so thankfully I got out of that. Um, but didn't do, I mean, I was still so young. I didn't really do any therapy or I didn't really do any self-exploration at that time. I just thought, wow, this is not how I thought my life would start. Mm -hmm. Um, but I ended up out of that marriage. I ended up, you know, after a couple of relationships, leaving Nebraska and moving to LA with my best friend from high school, who was going to college there Mm -hmm. and enrolled in school at Santa Monica college and got a job there. And I just started to really do some, you know, spiritual exploration at that time. And I was reading about angels and I was reading about, you know, spirit and, you know, I was raised Catholic. I never got confirmed. I, it just never really spoke to me. Mm -hmm. I was always questioning my, my religion. I never really, it didn't resonate with me at all. Um, so I ended up doing that. And through that discovery, I, 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 I opened up a door, like a big door. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've had a lot of really fascinating experiences in my early 20s with my spirituality, things that have happened to me um, once I opened that door. And um, I'm happy to talk about that a little bit if you if you want to know. Sure. Yeah, I'd love to hear about it. I know Michelle probably knows, but I don't know. And I'd love to. (laughs) Yeah. So I was doing um, meditation on angels. Mm. And, um, you know, I mean, for some reason, they just speak to me. Angels just. (laughs) I'm always just like, oh, it's such a great thought to to have or to know a feeling that you have somebody with you since you came into your body. Like, mm-hmm. so you know, like you're they're with you through everything, guiding you. You only need to ask. So I started doing a lot of meditation on that. And I had an experience. I was um, working in Santa Monica and I was sitting on Third Street Promenade. Michelle, you, you know, you know what that's like. And the ocean's right there. And mm-hmm. there's a lot of homeless people. It's kind of a mixture of like, you know, 
And every and, and mall in the middle of nowhere, but yet you know you're in also one of the most beautiful spots in California. And wealthiest, you know, there's just a hodgepodge of people. It's good people watching. So I'm sitting on the bench and I'm, you know, just thinking about my life. And suddenly I was taken out of my body mm. and I was up in the air. Okay. And mm. I like a bird's and I was high like a bird. So it was like a bird's eye view of, of, I could see the ocean. I could see the promenade. I could see it for blocks and blocks and blocks. And I could just see everybody walking around, you know, down there. Everyone's so busy and they're like, he's so serious and they're going about their day. And I just had this like tickling sensation and this, my, my abdomen. And I heard, oh, no, it wasn't even a voice. It wasn't like an, my inner self saying to myself, do you see how serious everybody is? Like life is not mm-hmm. supposed to be serious. You're supposed to be having fun. You know, this is all for you. You know, this experience is for you to enjoy and explore and stop taking everything so seriously. Mm -hmm. And then, right. And then I remember thinking, well, that's when I started to think, like, what is happening? (laughs) You know, and as soon as you start doing that, you're like, drop right back down in your body. So, but it was such an incredible experience that I, I just was, oh my gosh, I just couldn't wait to like do more of that. I wanted to connect more. Um, so I did, I was doing a lot of that. Um, and I was alone. I was living alone. Um, my girlfriends had moved away. Um, so I was in my own studio apartment and I had no money, literally like was eating chicken broth and rice, you know, for, for dinner, but I was the happiest I'd ever been in my, like, I wasn't worried about anything. You know, Mm -hmm. I was worried about money. I was just like, I didn't care. I just, Uh I was just excited to get up every day being by myself in a city. I really didn't know anybody in. And, and I was just like excited about my life. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's, it's a precious gift. It's a precious gift. um, When spirit gives you that and shows you, you know, what it, what it really is all about. And I was so still so young. I was only like 22 when that happened. Yeah. Um. And so, you know, I just kind of carried that with me. I got married um, to a wonderful guy that Michelle knows well, um, to, uh, also chosen family, my ex-husband. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we spent a good couple decades together. Mm-hmm. Really, um, I think building a beautiful life. We have a daughter who's 19. Um, and, 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 you know, and through our I mean, what do you say about a marriage for, of 25 years? I mean, there's all kinds of things I could say, um, but he's truly my, one of my best friends to this day, even though we decided not to stay married. Um, and I consider him my forever family. Like I can't, I can't undo that, nor would I, if I could. We're like, um, we, you can't quit him. You can't I quit him. him. Well, if you knew, if you know, Russell, like you, just something special about Russell, like he's just, yeah a really cool guy. Um, (laughs) it's just that we were, you know, more like friends than, than anything. So Mm -hmm. I was looking for a little more Mm -hmm. Um, and I felt like, you know, when I turned 50, I felt like it's now or never, like I, I got it. I got to get, first of all, get back to me because I lost myself in the marriage and I lost touch with spirituality. I lost, you know, I lost a lot of that, connection to self Mm. and that feeling I had when I was, you know, with my angels. So, um, so yeah, so I've been, that's kind of where I'm at right now is just, um, living by myself. My daughter's at college and, um, I'm single and I'm almost 55 years old. Yeah. I mean, so with spirituality, it's just always surprised me that you didn't go into like more of the yoga instruct, like, it just feels like there's such an alignment around all that health and wellness piece of it. And um, I'm just curious, I think if anyone gets to know you a little bit, it's like, there's this natural, there is a natural Buddha within you. Like there's also the most real core of a human, like within Chrissy, like if I, (laughs) regardless if I've asked for it or not, I am always getting the truth. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) 
No, but it's like such a valued, it's like a valued commodity. I mean, it's rare. It's like, I appreciate it so much. And I mean, I always say like, I wish people, I, I hope women have friends like my friends, right? Because the way, you know, we show up for each other, but I mean, Chrissy, over this last like five years of after the divorce, um, you know, what was going through your head? Those like we were just talking about some statistics and typically in hetero um, heteronormative divorces, it it's if the woman is deciding it takes between three and five years to get a divorce. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know. Russell's had, you know, had a lot of health issues. So for me, that was, I mean, for all, for both of us, it was really challenging. And, you know, I mean, I think when you're in a relationship, whether you're married or not, when you spend a lot of time with someone, um, you know, you, you know, they're, they're the best parts and the worst parts. Right. And we all have the need uh, to grow and to change and to become more of who we are fully, and I just was thinking, I was waiting. I'm like, well, gosh, maybe if, you know, since this bad thing happened or this challenge happened, maybe we'll shift, you know, mm -hmm. now seeing what really is important in life. And, and, you know, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Like I thought it was going to happen. And um, so, yeah, so it took me, it took me a, like a long time. I'd say it took me like five, at least five years where I was like, okay, this isn't going to change. I'm not going to change. He's not going to change. Doesn't mean you don't love the person anymore. It just means that, you know, it's just not going to shift. And do you stay stuck? Do you stay stuck in it? Or do you, do you move on? And it's, it's hard. I mean, especially when you've been married for decades, it's hard. It's hard. To I think that's a, that's like a common thing. I think a lot of women find and probably just humans in general, but like when one partner starts to expand and grow more if the other person's not along for the ride of that it, it just creates this this moment where it's like okay I have to decide am I going to stay with this person and and continue growing but they're going to stay the same and our relationship's gonna it's going to be strange and odd and how are we going to navigate that or do I make that separation and continue on my journey regardless of whether or not it was a good or a bad situation and just continue doing my life on my own yeah. And I don't want to, I mean, I want to also just preface that with saying that we did a lot of work. We went to therapy. Like we, we talked like it just, we just were not, it just wasn't happening. You know, it just for whatever reason. Christy's like one of the first people in my like adult life where they were like in couples therapy to like really um, like hazmat you know, training, it's like to just keep things talking. And so I think that always stood out to me at how honest and open you were about, Hey, we're just in, we're in couples therapy and, um, just talking through stuff. And it just made me feel less, a little bit less crazy to want that for my own relationship, my own marriage you know, and even though a lot of times it feels like we're just putting band-aids on thing, it still allows us to practice within that space, at least for the meantime, like to ask for what we want because of that third party. Yeah. And I, you know, I think, you know, that's for me, that was the frustration of my marriage was I really love him mm -hmm. and I wanted it to be different. Right. Mm -hmm. and I, I tried so hard to make that happen. And yep. you know, it just was never going to happen. And at some point, you know, you just have to, you have to, I mean, you don't have to walk away, but I chose to leave. Um, and I think I still love him. You know, that, I, that's what I've learned through this whole thing is like, you don't mm -hmm. have to get divorced and hate the person you left. Right. You, you can love that person for all the reasons that you married that person, you know, mm -hmm. because they're, Cause he's a good freaking person. And I really like, I love him. I think he's a, a tremendous human being. It's just, we weren't living. We didn't live the same. I mean, I don't know if anybody out there has that experience with their partner where, you know, you just don't live the same way. 
you don't like things the 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 way the house looks the same. You don't, you know, some of you just ball up your socks and like stick them in a drawer. Other people color code their closet. I mean, it <laughs> sounds so like unimportant, but really it isn't unimportant. It is so important that we're living the same way and or and or at least respecting the other person living that way. Like I after a while, I was just like, I can't do this anymore. You know, this isn't, this is like, my brain is starting to, to fog up. Like, this is just too much. I can't handle it. She, um, tell, tell, she told this story to me once, like, she was like, look, I, I moved into the guest room, much like a lot of us, like, who yeah. are staying within that space for a little bit, because working out the details, whatnot. And one day Russ just said to her, like, Hey, are you, you ever coming back upstairs? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like, I was downstairs for months and like, you didn't even say a thing. And then one day it's like, Hey, uh, you ever coming back to bed? I'm like, no, nah, I don't think so. You know? Uh-huh. And then honestly, it was that non-eventful. And right. then I was like, let's go take a drive, you know? And it was COVID. It was like, right when COVID hit. And I was like, oh man, I can't do this. Like, this is not going to happen. And um, because we were all, you know, together in the house. And even though we got along, I just, we were living separate lives on different floors. You know, it's really strange. More like roommates. (laughs) I mean, not even. Not even. (laughs) No, like he's upstairs, you know, in his cave, literally. And he'd come down for dinner and then he'd go back upstairs and, and I was like, Hey, you know, you, we're having a whole life down here. If you ever want to come down and join us, you know, that kind of thing. And, um, and then I just, you know, we, because we've done so much work because we've been through so much together, um, we had a lot of, you know, f- uh, physical challenges, um, health challenges, money challenges, you know, up and down, up and down. By the time we took a drive that day, we went down PCH and I was like, I I think we need to get a divorce. And you know what he said? Okay. If that's, you know, I mean, it was just like, okay. And then I see, I said, what, how do we do this? And he goes, I don't know how we do this, but what I do know is that we're going to do it in a way that we're going to show everyone how it's done. Mm-hmm. We're going to do it in a way that we you're honor. Really uncon- you're like consciously uncoupled without the book. that. Love mm-hmm. that. And it was like, and in that moment, I'm like, damn it. I, I really like this person. You know, it's too bad. It doesn't mm-hmm. work. It's, it's true. It was sad. It was bittersweet, right? It's bittersweet. Yeah. They, when you they, know when something comes to a conclusion, right? Like it's come mm-hmm. to completion. And, you know, you're still, and you still have a, a friendship out of it, which is really cool. Now, if you're dating somebody, like, do you think, your relationship with him will like bug anybody new in your life. Like they'll be like, why are you so close with your ex? Yeah. Well, so I was dating somebody, um, after my divorce, it was a person that I dated, um, when I was young and, and living in Omaha. Um, and I lived with him for a year and that was after my, my brief toxic marriage, um, at, 19. So he was after that and we got reconnected after the divorce. So, um, yeah, so he, he didn't love it. You know, he's like, wow, you're really doing a lot for your ex-husband and, and he's not wrong. And I'm still doing a lot for my ex-husband, but mm-hmm. again, it's because of our friendship. Like I'm watching his dog right now. Cause he was in China for work, my ex-husband. So, right. um, you know, but to me, it's, he's family. You know, mm-hmm. so I, I never think it's odd or weird. Am I the only one who thinks that that's not odd or weird? No, I would, I would love more than anything for mm-hmm. the father of my kids and I to have that kind of relationship because it would make my life so much easier, but we have the opposite relationship, unfortunately, because of his choices. But that is something like coming, like when I was starting my divorce process, I was hopeful that we would have so that we could really like, cause we live, we live a couple blocks away from each other. Like we could be co-parenting our kids in such a beautiful way. Um, yeah. unfortunately we don't have that. And I don't know that we ever will, but that was something I was hoping for. So I think that's absolutely wonderful. And I, if I were to date someone who had a healthy relationship with their ex like that, especially when they have a kid involved, 
I would be totally on board with that person and probably become friends with them too. I just think it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned the kids, you know, which is the most important thing, you know, yeah. obviously. and our daughter, you know, it, it, she just, it makes it so easy for her. We're never fighting about it. We're never fighting over her. She knows we love and respect each other. Um, she sees that and she's, she's like, you know, she loves that we're like family weekend at college. We all go together. Mm -hmm. Russell's mom, my parents, we're all still a family. I mean, it was a little weird at first. I'm not going to lie. It took like a minute, but you know what? The, we, the love is the love, right? Mm -hmm. The love might change, but the love is the same in terms of our commitment to each other as a family unit. So <laughs> your mom still loves him, <laughs> which is sweet. Yeah. <laughs> because you don't have to be married. To him. Yeah. 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 They still, I mean, they it'll do. be, it'll be interesting if I have a successful relationship, um, outside mm -hmm. of my, my, my relationship with my ex-husband to see how that all flows and, and goes, um, because the relationship I was in after my divorce, you know, didn't flow and go. So, um, it was a start and a stop and it was volatile and it was emotional and it was, you know, it, it spun me right into my new, um, home place in life, um, which is me getting back to me. Yeah. Um, you know, it opened up a lot of wounds and it, but it also has shown me to remind myself who I really am, who I truly am mm -hmm. I'm kind of picking back up on my spiritual journey where I left it before I married Russell. Mm -hmm. And in your in your twenties, eating broth and rice. However, right, we're, we're we have a real job, so you're not you're not eating <laughs> broth and rice every I night. I have a house. I have a yeah. job. Exactly. I take care of myself. Um, no, but yeah, but just you know, the idea, and we and everyone's talks about it a lot. I mean, social media. We all know this. It's like it's what it's all about, right? Spirituality and self growth, and 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 learning from our mistakes and and becoming more fully who we are, but you know, it's, it, it a lot, I'm having like epiphanies about me myself mm -hmm. now at this stage in my life that actually blows me away. Like it mm -hmm. took me this many years to ask those questions of myself where the whole time I thought I was dialed in and I already knew the answer. No, not until life smacks you right in the face. Do you go, Oh, well, maybe there's more for me to know about myself. Well, that, that I think we're all doing. And also I think the thing that I love about you is that you're so good at turning the lens back on yourself. You're almost too good at it. Let's be real. And I know like a core of us say that to you because you're to a fault so hard on yourself that we don't ever get, we don't have to be hard on you because we know you're going to already like shoot yourself in the foot a few times. And, but I love how the capacity for yourself and knowing what the big picture looks like and you just taking it a day, a day in, day out, feel by feel and just being so heart open in the sense for who and what you want to be, you know, as as the days unfold. So it's really yeah. beautiful to watch you come back to yourself. Thank you. Um, well, I'm still, you know, still on the road, but she uh, just I can't say thank you and leave it. She's like, no, but I'm still, <laughs> we know you know what I mean? It's like, you just can't say, re I received that. I know I suck that's at that. That's a hard thing to get. Let's, that's a hard habit to break. Wait, Someone, wait. I went, the person I went on a hike with today was like, he was like, would you like a smoothie? And I, my instinct was to be like, oh no, I don't need a smoothie from this person. Like, it's fine. And then I was like, oh wait, yeah, that sounds really good. I would love a smoothie. And then she made a comment about it. She was like, it's so cool that you just like received it. And I was like, yeah, because we're practicing receiving around here. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's hard. I, I, I need to work on it. And you know, it's funny because my therapist said, um, my Western, cause I have a, like a spiritual therapist. And then I have my Western therapist who does more like traditional 
And she said, you know, you don't have to have all your shit together just because you're in your fifties. Like who told you that your life had to be perfect and you had to know all the things and you're not allowed to make any more mistakes because you're in your fifties now. And no, she's like, that's not the way it works. And I'm like, you're right. But why don't I know that? You know, it's just like, what the heck? How did I get here and not know that? And then she's like, here you go again. You're judging yourself. Exactly. It's it's (laughs) not about knowing. Right. It's not about what you don't know. It's what you do know. And, and like, you know, Chrissy and I went to see Abraham Hicks together Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we, we strolled up on the Vespa, (laughs) you know, just everybody's talking to us as soon as we jump off the Vespa and um, and then when we jump back on later, but throughout that whole process, it's like, it's learning to lean into what does feel good. So if you're focused, if we go back to that Abraham Hicks, and if we're focused on the fact that what we focus on will continue to keep. So if you're focusing on self-deprecation on the what I don't have, or how did I not know, or the shoulds, because the shoulds come from comparison and ego, right? Like all of those feelings do. So the minute Chrissy is like, the minute you just can say, oh, wait, it's, it's not about what I don't have and what I can't have or what I'm not having now. It's what all these beautiful things and finding and sitting in the gratitude that I know you're so good at doing also. It's like this teeter totter for you, depending upon the wave. But I think we all do this. And I think if we can just sit in the moment of gratitude and go, oh, yeah, let me think about all the tools I do have now because I've said yes to this, leaned into this found grace and, 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 you know, peace within myself that, that that's just past beliefs that all you're doing is just pushing those away because they no longer serve you for your highest good. So I think we, I only get hard on you in that sense of like showcasing and throwing a little lens on, on, on that is just to remind you that it's not about all of that. It's just about the things that are bringing you joy and just leaning more into that and saying, I want more peace. I want more good people around me and, and calling that forth. Yeah. And I think it also was a wake up to me to, to understand that, you know, I maybe have had a mask on for decades, right? Like I wasn't being honest with myself And, and, you know, it's easy to get swept up in that because then everyone thinks you're a certain way or everyone has an expectation of you because this is how you've been presenting. And even if inside you feel like this isn't really how I feel inside, but I've got to let everyone else think that I've got my shit together because what if they don't like, what's going to happen if everyone thinks that I'm falling apart then because I was a people pleaser and because I held a lot of things together in my relationships in my life, my family and you know, friendships, I didn't feel like I could actually tell everybody I'm struggling. Mm-hmm. Everyone thought I, every, my life was so good and it, it, and it wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. I just wasn't authentic. And, and now I get that chance, you know, and that's what I'm grateful for is now I get the chance to be authentically who I am and I don't have to apologize for it. I'm trying to think, and maybe River, you have a good answer for this. I when all of us fiercely independent people pleasers don't want to allow others in. Like, I wonder what that shift is for all of us to say to each of our friendships and, you know, at least say, I don't fucking got it all. Like, I, I'm trying to think of those moments of when we all say that to ourselves and Maybe that's a shadow, a night of the shadow, dark night of the soul. Maybe it's just in all of a sudden realizing that in order to be the people we want to be and walk this authentic life through our own personal truth, is it that we just surrender to that and noticing 
the safe people that we do have in place and by having that consensual friendship, platonic soulmates and things like that to just say, you're safe here. It's okay. You're fully safe. No judgment. And is that when we let go? I'm like, I know it might be different for so many people, but there is a point where we do, obviously we're here right now, right? Like Mm -hmm. because of our friendships and our deep rooted joyful love of each other to like see each other in the best possible life for them, for yourselves. I I think it's all of that. I think it's all of that. And I think that like, you know, our dear friend, Mary, her favorite word is, you know, deprogramming. I think it's just, it's a journey of deprogramming Mm -hmm. of the conditioning of, of like the mask, removing the mask because um, that's a hard thing to do. And it's a hard thing to let other people in, especially if you're a recovering people pleaser. And so I think it, it takes time. Like, I feel like I'm in the space where I'm able to now more easily allow people in and take the mask off and just be my authentic self Yeah, yeah. a majority of the time. But there are still even then moments where um, I find moments where I still shut down or I still am more cautious and... I've come to a space of recognizing that maybe sometimes that's okay too, because it's also a protection of our energy. And sometimes we need to do that. And Mm -hmm. so for me, it's also been a process of like seeing energy and seeing what is safe. And then also seeing when I need to protect myself and Mm -hmm. being okay going between the two, but the understanding of how they look different was a big piece of the process for me. Does Mm -hmm. that make sense? No, it does. Yeah. Yeah. It does. I'm also just thinking in the sense of like when we're processing these things or when we're processing, whether it's hurt, resentment, um, childhood baggage and things like that. I think there comes a point where you just want to not carry that any longer. Like it just almost like much like we made the decisions to split our marriages it's also like, I don't want to keep splitting myself. And it's, it's fascinating about you guys talking about masks because that Smokey Robinson song always like meant a lot to me, like tears of a clown, you know, um, and the tears of the clown. And he was talking about taking off, you know, wearing masks. Mm-hmm. That went around. Yeah. 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 So it's, um, it's interesting to me where you guys mentioned mass for some reason I recoiled at first thinking about that word, but then I was like, I wore an extroverted mask for so many years. Now I'm just sort of, I realize I love people and I do enjoy being out and about, but it's a lot more intentional these days. I think before mm-hmm. I was just using it to literally escape, obviously, like just being so the life of the party. So I got to, I got to talk to every single person at this party, like, you know, whatever it was. And I want them all to like me. Right. And I want them all to like. That is how, that's the mask that my ex presents to the world of being the life of the party and the one everyone likes and outgoing and all that. And it's a mask because that is not who that person is behind it. So that that can absolutely be a mask. And the other part of me has been realizing that the probably the most lovely compliments I like one of one that I got probably like 10 months ago and I was at an event with the club lilies people and one of them just came over to me and said I just want to thank you so much because every time we've had like interaction you're so good about literally making me feel like I'm the only person in the room at that moment Mm -hmm. And for me, being such an extrovert, a little bit ADD, a little dyslexic, like, you know, usually I'm like looking all around, but so it just showed that the growth for me has been being able to stay in like a present state. Certainly, even on the podcast, I know people will notice when we get both excited, you know, River and I will sometimes like be talking over each other and we're like, hold on, you go first, you know, like we just have but it's more of an excitement thing and not because we're trying to do anything other than we're just like excited to share the thoughts. Yeah, totally. (laughs) Well, I like it when you guys get excited. So Um, Christy, I wanted to ask you a question, kind of going back a little bit to something you said, you were talking about how you have two therapists, one who's more spiritual and one who's more Western. 
And so I also work with like, I have my therapist who does IFS and she's definitely more Western, but she, she herself in, in her personal life is more spiritual, but in her practice, she definitely is more Western. Um, <clears throat> but then I also have the spiritual, like I've had Angela, you know, coaching with Angela, intuitive readings and working kind of more in the spiritual realm. And I've noticed an interesting crossover between the two. Like I had this conversation with my therapist where um, I've had a soul retrieval done with Angela. And after my third IFS session with my, my therapist, I said to her, I said, you know, this feels like a soul retrieval. Mm -hmm. And she just went, mm -hmm. yeah, she was like, Western therapy is catching up to what we've known spiritually for a long, long time. And so I'm curious if for you, having worked with both aspects, yes. like, have you seen that? And what has that looked like for you, like in the spiritual journey? Well, I'm also blessed to work with Angela, who yeah. is phenomenal. And I also had that experience where I'm like, I had Angela and half an hour before I had my Western therapist. And they said the same thing to me about me, you know, like in different ways, but the yeah. message was the same message. And I actually did say something to my Western therapist. I'm like, you know, I work with a spiritual coach and you guys are saying the same thing. And she's like, cause you're, you're mind, body, spirit. Like, yeah, you know, it's all of you, like all parts of you, like, you know, with mm -hmm. the family system, she doesn't, she's like, you know, you're, I've been in my, my protector is alive and freaking well. I mean, she will cut a bitch, you know? I mean, that's just like, but it's not healthy, you know? And like, I'm so fiercely protective of, sorry, that was like my, uh, my uh, South side Chicago friend. We, that, that's her term. I don't use that usually, but, but I love it. <laughs> anyway, so you know what I'm saying? Like I'm fierce. Yeah. I've been fiercely protective of, I've got my shit together Everybody can come and rely on me. Go ahead and, you know, set your stone down. You know, I gotcha. And after a while, I'm like, I can't carry these rocks anymore. You know, like I, I think I, to, to what you were saying earlier, River, I think my, my mask fell off when I had a nervous, like basically my, my breakup with my relationship after my marriage, like that literally brought me down on my knees mm -hmm. on the floor in the living room. <clears throat> asking God for help because mm -hmm. I was broken mm -hmm. you know? and it wasn't even, it wasn't the relationship that broke me. It was, it was the realization that, that it's, that I don't have it all together and I don't have to, I can't pretend anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the catalyst. That was the straw that broke the camel's back and, you know, it cracked me open and, and I'm like, thank freaking God. I don't have to pretend anymore. Mm -hmm. why have I been pretending mm -hmm. like everyone that I love and that loves me still loves me and I still love them like it's just like a self-inflicted pain that you, you don't you don't need to do to yourself and I don't and again Michelle's going to be like don't be so hard on yourself Chrissy but I didn't know that I didn't know I didn't know what I didn't know do you know what I mean and yeah. that's and that's okay well yeah, that's like that's I had a similar kind of experience where it's like, looking back at all my relationships, it's like, when you have bad relationships, sometimes we kind of get in this like victim mindset about it of like, oh, this happened to me. And then after my marriage and divorce, I just, I came to this place where I had to realize like, I have been calling in the same kind of relationships over and over because I was co-creating them and because I was self-abandoning. And so I was a common denominator. Like, yeah, there's a pattern and, and they did shitty things. It was toxic and all of that. But the common denominator truly was me because I was allowing it and I was self-abandoning. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in those moments where you just like, like have this epiphany of like, oh my God, how did I not see this before? And it does, it kind of breaks you a little bit where you're like, what do I do now? Right. No. And Michelle and I have talked about it. Cause I was like, I think I was kind of just like, my mind was blown over it. Right. Michelle. I was like, what is this? And how do I not know this? I mean, because I'm not unaware. I'm not, you know, I'm not a, aware. Yeah. So I, I, you can still not have everything, you know, and that's okay too, but it's like, I'm still alive. Right. I'm still on a journey. 
um, learning all the things and damn, you just never know when it's going to, when something's just going to click it's, and then you can heal those things we're, broken. We're still learning about attachments and, all, and dis and, you know, detachment. And I mean, th- that is still fairly new to, I mean, you know, codependency is what, when did Melanie write that book 10 years ago? I mean, oh, when you think, yeah, I mean, when you think about these new terminologies that we're easily throwing around now because we're more educated in it, you you don't know what you don't know until you know it. And until then, the Buddhist mentality is don't focus on that past as far as the, that part of your journey because you didn't know. But the minute you really knew and it hurt so bad, but you knew you walked away when you had enough tools. It literally was like, I now have all the tools to build my new kingdom. And that, and you're like, that's what you're waiting for. That last freaking nail to just like your toolbox is set for the moment enough to give you a push to move from California to Arizona, create a beautiful space for yourself to where your daughter is so excited. She's like, mama, can you fly me in for the weekend? Cause I just want to come hang out with you, which is the the coolest part of it. You live close to where you love to hike. You're in a, a state that has lots of vortex and calming principles. We were just talking about river having, feeling a draw to the desert. She doesn't know why, but there's just this and and Chrissy, you can speak to come that. Be with so, us, River. Come be with us. Yeah. It's so funny because I, I visited Phoenix um spring break my freshman year of college. Some friends, we did a road trip from Portland, Oregon down to Phoenix. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, that week I spent in the area, I just it lit me up so much. And I wanted I, I had this moment where I was like, I'm gonna transfer schools, I'm gonna move to Phoenix and finish school in Phoenix. And then I got home and life didn't unfold that way, but I've always found myself like drawn that direction. And then um, it's so funny, speaking of Angela, when I was starting my divorce process, one of the readings she did for me was like, she was like, I see you in the desert. You need to go to the desert this summer or this, you know, soon, like plan a trip soon to the desert. Like you need to go there. Your spirit's calling you there. There's some healing there for you. And I spontaneously planned a week road trip by myself solo trip you know down to Zion and that's where I met Michelle and (laughs) Shanti and our other friend Michelle and it's like I find myself getting called back there often throughout the year so who knows maybe maybe someday I'll be there with you all well we would love that we would yeah Um, I mean but until then you're going to come and visit and hang out and do things here but it is pretty he told you to go to the desert you and I met and then I happened to live in the desert. And then of course, you know, you have a, you have a built-in community already here. So that's really cool. Uh, speaking of community, there was another question I wanted to ask Chrissy. Um, oh, community. So some, something Michelle and I talk about often, and we did a whole episode around it is like the building of your community when you're going through those hard things in life, through divorce, mm-hmm. through your spiritual journey, through bad breakups. What has community looked like for you in your journey with spirituality? I mean, honestly, Michelle has been like my bedrock through all of this, you know, because we, we were going, I mean, we've known each other since we were in our early twenties. And so we're kind of, we're family, but um, we were going through similar things at the same time. So that's always helpful, right? When you have a friend who can empathize with you and who knows you. You know, yeah. that's, that's a gift. So I'm grateful for that. And then through that comes, you know, I met Angela. Um, I have my girlfriend that I moved when I moved in, um, when I moved to LA, she's still one of my best friends from when I was 12. Mm-hmm. I have her and I mean, I have a lot of wonderful relationships, but you know, I mean, for me right now, I realize that the most important thing is for me to love myself. And, you know, it, people say it all the time, like, oh, you should love yourself. And if you loved yourself, you know, you, everything would be okay. 
And, but what does that really mean? I mean, you can intellectualize it, but how do you live it? How do you feel it in your body? Mm-hmm. How do you, do you like, I miss that 22 year old in LA, you know, giving no fucks. Yeah. I mean, giving, I mean, just like loving my life because I woke up that day and I'm alone. I'm by my, I'm like, I like me. It's been a lot of decades since I've been in that place. So for me, I'm doing a lot of, um, I have a great support system, like you said, River, but for me, it's more of me getting to know me again in that Mm -hmm. same sense of spirit of, you know, I'm a facet of the creator. What does that mean? We're all facets of the creator, right? We're all, yeah. div- we're all divine love. We're divinely loved and we're divine love. Yes. And, and how do I feel that in my body every day? You know, the joy of knowing that I'm loved just because I exist as we all mm-hmm. are, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what my focus is right now. And it, well, uh, with I that, think a lot of self-reflection and like, you need, you need to be alone in those, in those spaces. That's what I was say is that. I think where people get really uncomfortable is first of all, the people pleaser says, I still need to be like, while I'm going through all this, I'm going to abandon myself for a minute because my neighbors need me to show up for something that literally won't give, get, like I won't even care about in five years or three years or even a year from now. And I think it's really important to understand this place of, much like when we get into relationships and we go into a bubble, when we're also processing grief or um, relationships, divorce, I mean, the grief is is can be on multiple levels where you're grieving your old self, you're grieving saying, mm-hmm. yeah, you're grieving, um, you know, uh, how you showed up for yourself in your life, you know, whatever, like, or grieving just the relationship of like the what ifs and all the questions that come to it. I think at the end of the day, people have to realize that if you're finding yourself only wanting to be with yourself, that's actually a really good, healthy sign. And if you don't have people in place that can understand that, then you're going to have a lot of really like aggressive friendships or they shouldn't be friends, but Right. You know, they're like, where have you been? I've been needing you. And if you if you're not giving from your overflow, as I've said so many times, it's like you can fill your own cup, but that still may be barely tapping out. It's like, oh, my God, like maybe one yoga session or one hike on a day. You you need more than that. And so you have to just be OK at listening to yourself and saying to your like it's okay to say no to things, to external things so that you can show up in your best self the next time that person might need you. And I think it's really okay as a boundary or as a little moat around your safe haven is just to say, hey, um, I'm here, but I'm not really available for a period of time or today or God, I wish it was another day. I just really need a day to myself. Like, it's okay to find that dialogue. And then if you're really healing the codependency piece, you don't feel guilty anymore. (laughs) I think there's a, it's it's so fascinating. I resonate with everything you're saying, because I think the more that you get in touch and in tune with yourself, the, the more relationship you have with yourself, um, the more jealous you are of your your own time and energy and the more More careful you are with how you spend it and where it's going. Um, Yeah. You know, I was just listening to um, Paramahansa Vishwananda, who is this guru that I Mm -hmm. went to Long Beach, had a great experience with that, but he was saying, you know, can you sit with yourself? Can you sit alone with yourself? Mm-hmm. For, for two hours a day. And like, right away, like I start to get anxious. I'm like, what do you mean two hours sit with myself? Like, what do I do? You know? And he's talking about meditation, but he's like, you know, can you sit in, connect with your, your divinity basically, you know, because mm-hmm. everything comes from that place, even though we're, you know, we've dropped down into bodies and we're having this amazing human experience, which is a, a blessing and a gift so we can grow and 
have these wonderful conversations like we're having, but it's like, gosh, do we ever teach our kids? Hey, you know what you need to do? You need to sit with yourself and like who you are, just you and you like, that's it. Just you, you and your creator. That's it. Kate and I I sat in the jacuzzi today and she's like, I'm bored. I go, Oh my God, what a luxury. You know what I say? How can you be bored? We are living on this incredible planet. Yeah. So much beauty and interest that the creator has made for us to enjoy the nature the people like this is all for us to have this experience. It's like, how could you ever be bored? Well, and the other part of that is we agreed to come back here. <laughs> it's like, let's we signed up for it. <laughs> let's not forget that, that we ourselves said, we're okay to go back. Cause it was, you know, it's just like, you know, when you're deciding on if you want another kid or not, you forget all the agony you went through the first rounds. <laughs> and then you're like, okay, I forgot all that, but I'm really wanting a baby, another baby or whatever. But I think I digress. Or a puppy. Not- <laughs> exactly. Um, no, I just think it's important that I agree with everything you both said in that sense of feeling you just have to sit in your shit sometimes and to move through it in a, in a, in a way that feels suitable to you or, but the two hour sitting meditation, this is the thought I was having was like, we sit through Netflix, you know, we, we, we binge watch, right? I mean, his point isn't really far off. It just feels scary to go hours in quiet meditation. Like, but I'm in <laughs> quiet meditation watching some dumbass, you know, fun, fun binge series on, you know, on who we're constantly running away from ourselves that's right. why, and that's why it's so scary to sit with ourselves like when I did my nature quest a couple of weeks ago you know yeah I was outside in the elements it's cold raining sitting by myself in the same spot for four hours being with myself and with nature mm-hmm. and a, a year ago I would not have been able to do that mm-hmm. in, in that way because sitting with myself was so uncomfortable that I would do anything to get away from it. And I think that's where a lot of us are at or have been at is that we're just seeking external distractions to not have to go inward because going inward is, I, I like to call it, it's like going to the basement, the, the dark, scary basement that you haven't cleaned out in years. And there's cobwebs and there's some boxes down there that you're like, I don't know what's in that box, but it's, it's a little smelly. Maybe <laughs> you have to clean it out. You have to clean your basement out. And that's, that's, you know, what meditation and going inward is. It's not about peace, light, and love all the time. It's about going in and clearing out. Yeah, I kind of equate it to sediment at or the sand in the in the shallow parts of the ocean where it's mm. all clear. But the minute you step in and disrupt the sand, it, it creates a cloudy look because everything's coming to the surface. And then once I stop moving again, the sand just goes back to being calm and I can see my toes or I can see where I burrowed my feet into that space, you know, and you can see it all. So I equate our parts, um, things that we're not really looking at, things that feel hard and painful to drudge up is just like sediment, you know, in a wine barrel, you know, it's like, it's in our gut, it's in our core, the different parts of our core. And I just love the idea of like, I've just been going in there and just little Barbie, you know, or whatever you want to say, like little Barbie shovel, like a little toy shovel. And I'm just like, you know, moving the icky sediment out, you know, with each, with each level of growth, I think. And then I won't be an enlightened being because I wasn't born to be an enlightened being, but I hope at the end of my life there's a lot less sediment that there is now and that I can look back fond, you know, with fond memories and joyful moments, golden moments that we can all, you know, enjoy within our, within each of our lives. Like I wish that for each of you, I wish that for anybody that I encounter, I hope humanity just finds this beautiful place within themselves. Cause 
if we all found love within ourselves, and I'm sure your guru would agree, Chrissy, it's like, if we all could find this love within ourselves, there'd be a lot less hate. There would be no hate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I under, I think- understandably understand not everybody is going to get there, but if there was just a lot more love, then we'd have a lot less hate. I mean, I think and I will say like, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say as parents, we're all, we are all parents. We're all moms. Yeah. That, I mean, that's a fundamental that we should be teaching our kids. You know, mm-hmm. I know my daughter struggles um, with being alone because she, she's adopted. She was abandoned, you know, at two months old. Um, and so she's got a lot of abandonment issues. She doesn't like to be alone at night. You know, she's got all those kind of sense memories, I'm sure, um, from when she was, you know, left outside overnight alone at two months old. But, you know, I mean, we have to teach those things to our kids. We have to teach them tools. And we also have to let them know that there are like not good people out there. There aren't healthy, you know, emotionally healthy people out there that you might end up in a relationship with. And what does that look like? You know, I mean, all of those things, we just, I don't think we're teaching the right things at the right time in life. And maybe that's part of my horror at being 55 and just going, oh, wait, now I'm supposed to, I should have known this a long time ago. You know, I mean, again, I know I'm being- You learn it when you learn it. Stuff should start in fifth grade, like life sciences. Exactly. Where they should literally make the kids sit for five minutes at a time. In sixth grade, you go to 10 minutes. In seventh grade, and you just continue to grow that out where it becomes normal to help them regulate. And then after that five minutes, they journal for five minutes. Like you can keep it within like the grade and their age, you know, group, kind of like when they're six and you give them a timeout, they're sitting there for six minutes. It's like same thing. You're 11, you can sit for 11 minutes and we'll put on music to help that, or we'll do a guided meditation but normalizing, understanding what anxiety looks like and how things show up and talking about the attachments and giving them kid size examples for when you're on the playground, if someone says this, this is actually what it can translate into, you know, when you're adults or whatnot, but, um, or this I, uh, is what later on. With my kids, it's so interesting because I can see. Wait, like I is had it- a- this like do we just create we should just create like a program well so I was gonna say is like with my kids I think I think for a lot of kids it's you know they're such visual learners and they're such like they're they're soaking up everything that you're doing right and I think for a lot of parents studying the example teaches them so much and so for my kids like I am very vocal with my kids about loving myself And so, for example, like my five-year-old said the other day, like, um, you know, his other parent is very critical about accomplishments and there's high expectations around how you show up and and things like that. So my five-year-old is already saying things like, oh, I'm, I'm so frustrated with this Lego car I was building. I don't like myself right now. And instead of being like, oh, don't say that. That's bad. My, I get curious with him. I just get down the floor with him. I'm like, okay, I hear that you're frustrated and that you right now you don't like yourself, but you know what? Like, look at what you made. This is so cool. And don't you think it's so cool that you have the tools and like knowledge to put this together? Like, this is really brilliant, buddy. Like, what is something that you love about yourself? And he'll be like, he was like, oh, I'm really good at building stuff. I'm really good at building, building things. I was like, yeah, you are. Isn't that cool? And so just like, having those conversations, modeling it with them. Cause I yeah. say those things about myself all the time. I let them hear when I'm frustrated with myself, but I also let them hear when I am feeling good about myself and I appreciate myself. And I kind of had this, um, aha. I texted Angela last week about it. Cause I was like, I was, I was asking, I was like, you know, I've been wondering why, my kids, because I believe that our, our kids choose us, right? Like our, they, they, they're little spirits. They choose their parents. They choose who they come to, you know, oh, really? um, even, even like with adoption, like, the, you know, that maybe One, you yeah. weren't, didn't birth that baby, but that baby was meant to come to you. Like oh, she no. was meant, her spirit was seeking you out. 
and she came through another vessel, but you're her mother. And, mm-hmm. um, I was thinking about that. I, I text Angela and I was like, you know, one of my big frustrations is like, my children chose me and I feel that I feel that very deeply, but why did they choose the other parent that they chose? Because I, I would not have cho- like my children were both birth control babies. Like I was not planning to have kids. Wow. I was not wanting to have kids at that point in time. Like the person I was with was not someone I wanted to have kids with. And yet I still had these babies. And I was like, you know, can you in a reading, like see the connection between the karmic connection between them and the other parents. So I can kind of understand like why they chose us. And she's like, yeah, for sure. But then later that day I was meditating and it came to me right in meditation that they chose us because there's a balance. There's a balance of healthy and shadow of love and ego. And we are kind of like showing them and they already see. And I hear them saying things that make me realize they're seeing the contrast between us. And so I, in the times when I'm frustrated, I just keep showing up with love and modeling that for them and modeling all the things I want them to learn by doing it for myself and they're seeing it. And then the flip side, they're seeing all the shadow and ego that I don't want them to learn, but now they're, they have the tools to deal with both of them. I love that. <laughs> and they're also going to grow up into adults and they're going to see you each as adult, as people instead of yes. Parents, right? Yes. And that's important. Um, but yes. I also like what you said about doing this, the, um, the, the, less of the self negative talk and more of the positive talk, because that's what I'm working on right now with my Western therapist is positive self-talk. Like, you know, look in the mirror and say, I am who I am. And that is enough every day. It feels like super forced and like almost fake sometimes, but it does really rewire your brain to Mm -hmm. when you are doing self-talk. You're not just automatically defaulting to that you know, oh, that I'm really frustrated. I'm stupid. I shouldn't have done that. Or, I mean, that's my issue, as you can hear in this podcast. <laughs> I'm always like so hard on myself, but you know, it it's so good, River, that you're in Michelle too. I know you guys are teaching, and I'm teaching Sasha the same thing. Like, talk about yourself in a positive way. Love yourself. I mean, that is part of loving yourself. And again, we don't, we weren't. I wasn't taught that as a kid. No, and as adults, I think in our current society that, you know, self-love is kind of a buzzword. <clears throat> so I, I, when I'm talking to people about it, I try to kind of approach it from like having self-kindness, having self-appreciation, having gratitude for yourself, acknowledgement of self, um, forming a friendship with yourself and with your body. And that is all like, those are all the components of love. And so I, I try to take it away from being the buzzword. I think sometimes that helps because that helps my brain of like, what does self-love look like? <laughs> like you were talking about earlier, like what does it mean to embody self-love? And it's often talked about in the context of loving your body, but it's so much more than that. Gosh, yeah. Yeah. And then put it, put self-love to work when you start to date. That's a whole other level of self-love because I know- <laughs> These eyes are pulling back. <laughs> eyes rolling back in the head, yes. The eyes rolled back, I think, to literally China and back for the minute. <laughs> the way she did that. But it is, <laughs> it's like a whole other level when you're intentionally setting those expectations on what you want out of dating, whether it's, you know, you've identified that you want a long-term relationship But also knowing yourself, knowing that you're very, like, I'm demisexual. I didn't know what that meant before, but now I understand that. And for some people who don't know that term, it's really, you have to have an emotional connection before a physical connection can really happen. And for me, that is elementally, like fundamentally true. And um, because I've tried other ways, like, and I just cannot, not at all get there in my head. Um, or in my heart. And also knowing that I live in a heart space, not necessarily as much head space as um, other people. And so being heart forward and also 
loving yourself means you're protecting that heart. You're protecting what feels good and right for you in how you're choosing a partner, how you're, how, if you want a second date, well, why am I wanting a second date? What did I feel nourished in the first one to want a second date? So it's like, you have to be super intentional because it is about you at the end of the day, as much as it is about that person, you hope that person is coming in with enough self-love that they're making these decisions based on themselves also. And that's why not every person will work out has nothing to do with us. It's literally how we show up together and where they are on their journey, as well as where I'm at, because you can have two great people. They just don't necessarily go great together. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's true. And I, but I also, I also think too, you know, we attract. Yes. Times because of our wounds. Right. So we need to be mindful before we, what those are. I mean, obviously you're not going to, I mean, sometimes it takes a partner to help you heal those things, you know, which is wonderful if you can find someone who's going to do the work with you, but just recognizing what that is too, you know, I mean, why are you attracted to somebody? I mean, for me, you know, I went from my marriage to this other relationship and it was the same thing. I just, it just looked different. Right. But I'm, cause I still had the same wounds that weren't healed. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. so you, you, you met, you met that you met him in that same space you didn't give yourself the time that you're giving yourself right now because whoever potentially um, gets the pleasure and the honor to spend time with you, it doesn't mean it needs to be forever, but whoever is that person next, you're meeting them as an, as in a new space for yourself. So that's exciting, right? Because hopefully we've done this work that we're now meeting people who actually entice us and excite us and like, and there's a, reciproco a reciprocity and that reciprocal space, but that you're hoping it feels very much aligned, which therefore is actually fun. I, it's can't, like, even, I can't even think about it. Oh, I know you can't right now. I know. It's all good. I'm still like, I'm just, I'm in the phase of just permitting and getting to know my, getting back to that 22, 23 year old in love with self. Yep. Honestly, I think back in my life, and of course, the best thing that's ever happened to me is my daughter. Um, but aside from Sasha, I would say it was that moment at that time in my life where I woke up in joy and mm -hmm. I had nothing except I had myself and I mm -hmm. loved myself. Mm -hmm. it, it's been a lot of years. So I'm super excited to get back to that place. I'm really yeah. glad that that you're doing that for yourself. Um, cause I've watched, I watch a lot of people who are coming out of divorce, dive, dive <laughs> right down deep into another relationship. Um, I did marry again quickly, having more kids, all of that, you know? Um, <clears throat> and I have a parent right now who is going through a divorce and immediately ejected from that relationship had gone from being with my other parents for 25 years, straight into another relationship is ejecting from that relationship now and has landed in another relationship has never lived alone, has never been by themselves in any period of their life. And I find myself saying, oh, I wish you would just give yourself some time to get to know what it is that you like, who you are. That would be amazing because it's been so healing for me to have that. Um, now that I've been single for two and a half-ish years, it's, it's like that's the best period I've had in my life of just giving myself the time to get to know who I am and what I like, and what I want to do with my life. So I'm really yeah. glad you're giving yourself that. It's it's a beautiful gift to yourself. Yeah, and also, like, who says you even have to find anybody, you know? No, like, you, don't. You, you don't. don't. you don't. You don't need to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who says? You know, that's we're, the answer. We're allowed, we're allowed to practice. We're allowed to fall in love. We're allowed to be single. We're allowed to literally do whatever the F we want. It's like... We're not hurt as long as you're not hurting anybody, as long as there's consensual hello and goodbyes. And, you know, it's like, it doesn't matter. It's like, as long as you feel good about the choices you're making. And if you don't, well, then 
that's why we examine shit. And that's why as friends, we deep dive it. We unpack it. We love a good muck session. (laughs) Yes, we do. (laughs) We really do. It's like, but that's like the part of understanding the healing part where we're not scared about it anymore. We're just annoyed that it doesn't happen as fast as we want it to be. Right. It's like Chrissy the other day is like, I just want it. I just, I'm just ready to be done. Like, I'm just ready for this to just be be sad anymore about it. Like, I don't want to be sad anymore. You know, my last reading with Angela, she was like, your guides just want to affirm for you that they know how exhausted you are. Mm -hmm. They just want to affirm that for you. Um, But there's more ahead. So buckle up. (laughs) And I just wanted to be like, yeah, look them up. (laughs) I don't, I I just don't feel like I'm in a place where I could give like an inch of myself to anybody right now. And that's important. Yep. So that's important to know. And I love that about you. Yeah, man, you guys rock. I love you. If you guys weren't my besties, I'd be like, so sad right now. I'd be like, um, okay. But now I I know I get to text you guys like for the rest of the night. So it's good. (laughs) Or call you or whatever. Or call. I'll be here. We'll be here. I know. Okay. I love you guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Chrissy, thank thank you. For, thanks for your vulnerability. Like, yes. we just appreciate you coming on because I think anytime um, we have these conversations, I know that someone will get something out of it. And and if not, you know, and we'll put Chrissy's, um, you know, Instagram there. So if you have any questions or Anybody wants to know anything, you can reach out. Yeah, you don't need to know all the things all the time. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just grace with yourself, right? Yep. Yeah. All right, ladies. Mwah, love yeah. you. Love Yay. you.